Welcome to the Genos introduction series. I'm Steve Paluca. I've been a network engineer for a number of years, and in this series of videos, I'm going to walk you through an introduction to the Genos operating system. In this first one, we're going to cover just three basic topics on Genos. One, the properties of the Genos operating system and how it's maintained and how it's used and the control plane on the Junos operating system, which is the brains of the system where all the decisions are made, and the forwarding plane on the Junos operating system where the packets are actually processed and forwarded out their respective interfaces. So these are the three topics that we're going to cover in this short presentation. Starting with the properties of the Junos operating system, the first important thing to know about Junos is that it is based on the free BSD Unix kernel. So this is a Unix variant, which, but it is not an open source variant. So many things built on free BSD are proprietary, uh, which is permitted under that system, and Junos is one of those. So it's a proprietary operating system. You won't have access to the source code, but it is based on Unix. So because it's based on Unix, we get the modularity that Unix gives us and the separation of processes. So if there's a problem with a particular process in the operating system, it doesn't necessarily crash the entire operating system. So we have a recoverability and a robustness here that's helpful in a modern network operating system. This also allows us to be scalable, so we can run on very small hardware or very large hardware as the task at hand requires. So this allows Junos to operate from these tiny desktop sized devices to the almost full racks of the carrier switches. Junos is maintained by Juniper in a single software train. So this means that a feature that's implemented is consistent across every platform from the smallest device to the largest. When you configure a feature set, the hierarchy, the commands, everything is exactly the same. This helps greatly in education because you only have to learn Junos features once, and once you know the feature, you can use it on any Junos device. There is a common misconception about that, though, that means that every feature is everywhere. This is not true. Only features that are applicable to the purpose of the platform are on the platform, so you won't find uh, flow-based firewall features on layer 2 packet routers. But if a feature does exist, it is implemented exactly the same way on each device. Juniper does have a regular scheduled release, so that's constantly being updated and new features are being added. Currently this is at three releases per year. It was previously four releases per year. The release numbers are uh, basically the first two digits of the year, a period, and then the release number. So 15.1 would be the first Junos release of 2015. So this same software will run from the SRX100, a small desktop size security platform, all the way to the rack size T-series for the service provider routers consistently and scalably from the smallest to the largest platform. The other major feature of Junos is the separation of control and forwarding. We have a routing engine that does the control of the device that is completely separate from the forwarding engine which takes packets in and forwards them out the appropriate interface. There is an internal link on the device where the two planes communicate with each other but their major tasks are performed separately. This means that if there's a problem with the network where we're getting too many packets and we're overwhelming the device, we still can connect to and make changes in the control plane because this is not overwhelmed by the packet forwarding problem. And conversely, if there's a problem in the control plane, that occurs on a device does not necessarily mean it will stop forwarding packets. Taking a closer look at how the control plane looks, <clears throat> the routing engine is inside uh, the box and will maintain both the routing table and the forwarding table for the device. It gathers all the information in from the network and decides which is the best way to build 
the layer 3 and layer 2 forwarding tables. Once those tables are built, they're then pushed down to the packet forwarding engine. The routing engine is also re responsible for controlling and monitoring the chassis. So the chassis has environmental controls and we might be sending traps or syslog messages. All these are done by the routing engine and independent of the packet forwarding operations. And finally, the routing engine will actually manage the packet forwarding engine and make changes to that as appropriate. So what kind of traffic then ends up at the routing engine or in the control plane? Exception traffic. Exception traffic is traffic that is destined for the local device. So if you're telnetting, SSHing, you have a BGP peer, your traffic is going right to the Junos device, that traffic is going to be forwarded to and processed by the control plane on the routing engine. So this is control traffic that allows us then to control things in the system or on the network forwarding. IP option fields are not handled by the forwarding plane. So if there's an IP option field set, that will be thrown as an exception to the routing engine, which will then tell us what to do with that particular packet. And likewise, most ICMP messages are also forwarded to the control plane for processing to tell us what the appropriate response is for those messages. So what kind of work does this leave for the forwarding plane then? The forwarding plane is basically going to take frames in, decide the best interface, and send those frames out. It's going to use that forwarding table that is created and pushed down to it from the control plane. It's going to implement any policers that bandwidth limit the interfaces. That's going to be handled right at the interface level on the forwarding plane. Uh, class of service operations for reading, applying, and changing those fields will be handled in the forwarding engine. And packet-based firewall filters are going to be applied at interfaces and done at the forwarding engine. So as you can see, the packet forwarding engine is purpose-built towards those operations that are directly related to packet processing. And this is what allows the higher-end uh, boxes with uh, line rate uh, processing to be very fast and independent of control operations. So there we have our general inter overview of the Junos operating system. We saw that the properties included being Unix based, uh, being scalable, and having separated processes. That our main feature is that the control plane is separated from the forwarding plane and the control plane takes care of the management and the operation of the forwarding and um, routing tables, while the forwarding plane concentrates on raw packet performance, getting packets in, shaping them on those specific filters, and sending them out again on the correct interfaces. So this is our basic overview of the operations of the Junos operating system. Thank you very much for your kind attention.